Welcome to the Provisioning Block Storage video demonstration. This demo shows how to create a LUN and iSCSI interfaces to communicate and provision the block storage resources to a Windows host. First we need to create a storage pool in the Unity system. The creation of a storage pool is very similar on both physical and virtual Unity systems with some differences on how the storage tiers are selected. We are going to show how this operation would be done on a physical system first. From our Unisphere session to our physical Unity system, let's create a storage pool by selecting the Pools option under the Storage section. From the Pools page, let's click on the Add icon to open the Create Pool wizard. We are going to give a name and description for the pool and click Next. Then on the Tiers section, let's check the box of two tiers to build a mixed pool. The tiers are added with the RAID configuration. If desired, it is possible to change the RAID configuration for the added tier. Let's close the window without making any changes. Click Next. On the disk section, we can choose the amount of disk that will be used for each tier. And that will give the total storage capacity of the pool. Click Next. Systems with VVOLs, VASA licenses, will present the option to configure a capability profile name to be used for the creation of VVOL data stores. Let's skip this step at the moment. Click Next. We can then review the selections that were made for building the pool and go back if any change should be done. Or click Finish to start building the pool. The results page displays the status of the operation. Close the window. Now let's take a look at the creation of a storage pool on a virtual Unity system. The navigation is the same, however some of the wizard options are different. Observe that after the name and description page, the next page shows the virtual disks used by the system and the tier that were assigned to them. This is a manual association performed by the user the first time a storage pool is created in the system. The Unity VSA deployment and initialization video demo explains this operation. Click Next. On the next screen, it is possible to select the storage tiers that will be used to build the pool. Click Next. And we are able to determine the capacity of the pool by determining the disk that will be used to create it. Observe that since this is a virtual Unity system, there is no RAID protection. The RAID protection is determined at the physical storage level, the underlying volumes that were provided to build the virtual disks. Click Next. The VMware Capability Profile name is a VMware object that allows the use of a storage pool for VMware VVOLs if the license is installed in the system. We are going to skip this step in this demonstration. Click Next. We can then review the selections that were made for building the pool and go back if any change should be done, or click Finish to start building the pool. The Results page displays the status of the operation. Close the window. To create a LUN, we must select the Block option under the Storage section. The main page of the Block option is the LUNs page. This page will list all the LUNs that were created and allow the user to view and change its properties or create a new one. Since this is a virtual system, let's make sure that we have iSCSI interfaces to provide block storage connectivity with our host. From the iSCSI Interfaces page, it is possible to view and modify existing interfaces and create new ones. Let's hit the Add icon to create new interfaces. On the Add iSCSI Network Interface window, select the port to be used. In this example, a Unity VSA system was used, so there was only one SP. Enter the IP address, subnet mask, and optionally the gateway to the configuration. Observe that both the port IQN and IQN alias are automatically created. Click OK to commit the changes. On a physical system, the configuration of two interfaces and different SPs would be done on the same window. 
In our demonstration, we need to repeat the operation to create a second interface for redundancy. On our Windows host, we are able to verify if the targets were discovered and connected in the iSCSI initiator properties. If not dynamically discovered, we can open the Discovery tab and add both targets using the Discover Target portal window. Then back to the targets, selecting and connecting them. On the Configuration tab, we can verify the host IQN. We are going to use it to register and log in the host in Unisphere. Back to the Unisphere interface, we need to create a profile for the host that will access the block storage using the iSCSI protocol. Select Hosts under the Access section. From the Host page, under the Access section, select Hosts and click on the Add icon. The Add Host wizard opens. Enter a name and optional description for the host and click Next. In our example, the host will access only provisioned block storage, so we are going to skip the network configuration. On the iSCSI section, observe that the host initiator was auto-discovered and can be selected. Click Next to continue. Review the host configuration and click Finish to commit the changes. The results page shows the status of the performed operation. Close the window. Observe that the new host was added to the list with one registered initiator and two initiator paths. Now we are going to create a block storage resource to be shared with the host. Let's select Block under the Storage section. Then from the LUNs page, click on the Add icon. The Create a LUN Wizard window opens. Enter a name and optional description for the LUN. Then select the pool to build the LUN from, tiering policy, and size of the pool. Optionally, we can define quality of service for the LUN. This will be discussed on another video demo. Click Next to continue. On the Access section of the wizard, click on the Add icon to associate a host profile with the storage resource. Select the host profile that was previously created and click OK. Then click Next to advance to the next step. We are going to skip the snapshot and replication steps of the wizard. These two features will be demonstrated on separate video demos. Verify the summary page and click Finish to commit the changes. The results page shows the status of the operation. Close the window. Once the storage resource was created, we are getting back to the Windows host to demonstrate host access to the resource shared by the Unity system. Open the Computer Management interface and select Disk Management. Disk Management will list the disks that are available to the host. Right-click the new disk volume and choose Online. Then repeat the operation and select Initialize Disk. Choose the default MBR, Master Boot Record, Partition Style and click OK. Once the status of the disk changes from Not Initialized to Online, then right-click the unallocated volume and select New Simple Volume. The new Simple Volume Wizard is launched. We are going to use the total capacity of the volume, then click Next. In the next step of the wizard, we are going to assign a drive letter to the new volume. Click Next. The volume will be formatted using the default NTFS format and allocation unit size. The option to perform a quick format is enabled by default. Optionally, we can customize the volume label. Click Next. We can review the configuration and go back to change any settings or hit the Finish button to commit the changes. The new volume is formatted and configured with the settings that we have provided. Observe that we can open the new volume with Windows Explorer. This concludes the Provision Block Storage video demonstration.